Tell me the stories of grace I love to hear. Things I would want you to tell me while I am here. Seeds of your church life, things you have seen. Stories of grace, share them with me. Oh, let me hear how these walls had shouts of praise. Tell me also of the tears that here have been laid. How has God challenged? How were you restored? Tell me the divine powers coming through these doors. Tell me in accents of wonder how you were formed. Tell how you walk with Jesus, strong and as one. How did the master ready you to serve? Tell me, Grace Congregational, why you are church. Reverend uh, Samuel Williams um, took over in 1789. The church was organized in 1788, but there's early evidence of division in the church. In other words, there was a West Parish and an East Parish, mm -hmm. and this one here is the East Parish. Uh, its original location was up on North Main Street, and then this site was uh, developed for this purpose. And then it was Samuel Williams who requested to end his service. And so he left. And you can see that there was two years they had no minister. Mm -hmm. uh, and then along came Heman Ball. And what he discovered was there were no records for the church. If uh, Mr. Uh, Reverend Williams had been here for that length of time, uh, where were the records? And he found some, and eventually he dictated what he thought the articles of faith for the church should be. And uh, it's in this book. Very interesting reading. And uh, Heman Ball did that. And he also began to establish uh, keeping church records. And then, uh, okay, we're up to 1821. And then there's a gap there to 1823. And it describes the ministry of Charles Walker. And then you can see where the stained glass person used a P instead of a, uh, an R. Uh on William Mitchell. Don't know why. Mm. Um, but it's supposed to be an ARA. Is there any abbreviation for somebody in the ministry? For PEV? Not that I know of. I, I'm not familiar I'm leaving with that. that possibility open. I, yes, well, I'll do the re I'll research to see that, because I, but I've never seen that abbreviation for a minister before. Yeah. But I'll have to research it to see. Yep. Uh, what did the LLD and DD, because I'm not familiar with those. Okay, what? in the old days, <clears throat> uh, older days. <laughs> older days. Um, LLD was a doctor, an honorary doctor of letters. Ah, okay. And uh, DD was doctor of divinity. Okay. And <clears throat> the... Uh, 
Now, of course, what you have, Doctor of Ministry? And, yeah, DM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Reverend Silas Aiken came along, mm -hmm. and uh, they made it uh, clear here that he was he was here during the uh, construction of this building, and so the the big effort was building this building in 1860, mm -hmm. and then after that. The next big change in the place was uh, in 1892. Mm. And that's when they um, built the wire loft and put the organ up there and so forth. So that's the importance of the stained glass in here. Mm -hmm. uh, this big one is very ripply. <laughs> You go on the other side and you can see it better. And the lighting has to be just right. But sometimes when you get at a low angle and looking up, you can see where there's, it isn't straight. Mm -hmm. But it's quite a piece of work. It, yes, it is. But does the, does the settling of the foundation have anything to do with the rippling or it no, just has it, to do with it's the- It's just how uh, stained glass ages. Oh, gotcha. 